We are ready games, and this is Penny Dreadfun, a 1 up to 3 hour semi co-op game of adventure and Victorian style for 1 up to 4 players. In Penny Dreadfun, you and your friends play the role of more or less historical characters trying to find the missing Queen Victoria and fight the demons that came from hell. There are three ways to play this game, scenarios, open world and boss rush. In this video we will explain how to play the first scenario called Prologue. The goal of the first scenario is to fight demons and close portals to hell. You have to clean the mess that the demons made and close portals to find out more about what the hell is going on. You will travel through the streets of London, gather resources, buy new items, fight and more. But beware, if the hell progress track reaches 10th space the hell will unleash the demons and the whole world will be doomed and you will lose the game. Each player controls one character with their starting deck and a special individual quest. This game is played over the course of runs and each round has two phases for each player. Hero phase, in which a character can move, gather and manage resources, use abilities and then perform an action. After the character completes their phase, the villain phase begins, in which enemies of the crown will scheme, resulting in move, fight or other action. After the villain phase, after the last player round ends, the decision token changes its owner, the hell track progresses and a new round begins. On the third round through the demonic portal, the miniboss enters the streets of London. It will move by one space to the nearest player at the end of each round. Once the token on the hell track reaches a red space, the player with the decision token has to flip one map tile to the other hellish side. While moving through the hellish side of the location occupied by villain, players will have to spend more movement points to move. Speaking of movement, let's see how the hero phase looks. Each hero phase starts with cleaning the active player's action pool, a special place where they can keep their tokens and resources. Remember that movement tokens are not discarded unless you have more than 4 of them. After cleaning their action pool, the player decides whether they want to move or not. If they choose to do so, they can discard any amount of movement tokens and cards from their hand to move by one space for each token or card discarded. Movement is important because the action performed by a character later on is based on the location that they are standing on. After movement phase, the player plays cards from their hand in no particular order to generate or gather resources, generate gold, movement or fight tokens. Everything that players receives goes into their action pool. That phase is called building an action pool. The cards that were played during this phase go to the discard pile. Some of the cards are called charged cards and they can store resources. When there are enough resources on such a card, its special ability can be used. Charged cards don't go to the discard pile after they were played. Instead, they go to above the player's board and receive one resource of the player's choice that is shown on the card. During the building and action pool phase, player can recognize the resources and put them on some of the quest cards and charged cards. Only resources with the same color as the resource printed on the cards can be stored there. Remember that if a charged card has no resources on it, it has to be discarded. Once a player moved their character, played their cards and organized resources, it is time to perform a field action based on the location the character miniature is standing on. There are five actions that can be performed in the first scenario. Buy. Player can replace one item from the market and then buy one card from the shop or buy cards that give more gold. By spending additional resource, they can buy additional cards as long as they have resources and gold to spend. Boost. Player takes two movement tokens to their action pool. Event. Player encounters a random event, either beneficial or not. Target. Player can shuffle one up to four enemies of the crown and draw new ones in their place. Then they can take one enemy of the crown to their action pool. They will be able to fight them later. Heal. Player can destroy a wound card from their action pool or discard pile. Fight, wound, heal. What are those? Let's find out how you can beat a creature from hell and what consequences such fight might have. Fight might happen in two different ways. First is when a player is using the action field to fight. Remember that in that situation the player's miniature has to be on the same location as the villain's miniature. Second one is when during the villain phase the villain's miniature enters the location with a player's miniature. If there is more than one player's miniature there, the player with the decision token chooses who will fight the villain. When the fight starts, the player has to choose a villain from the role if the miniature encountered is the enemy of the crown or fight the demonic miniboss if it is the miniboss's miniature. The player can always choose the villain from target action if it is enemy of the crown miniature. After that, the fight begins. Now, the player has an opportunity to deal damage. Damage is dealt with fight tokens and resources listed under the villain's weaknesses. The player can spend as many fight tokens as they wish, but only as many resources as shown on the villain's card. Whether the player defeats the villain or not, the villain will fight back. 
Check the resources under the retaliation to see how many damages the player will receive. The player can prevent that damage by discarding corresponding resources from their action pool. For each damage suffered, the player has to take one wounded card and put it on their discard pile. Wounds do not have an immediate effect, but once the player's deck ends and a new one is created from their discard pile, the player will finally draw a wounded status card. When that happens, the player has to put such card under the player's board. That card is not discarded at the end of the hero phase, and for each wounded status card, the player has to draw one card less at the end of the hero phase. If the player manages to defeat the villain by doing damage equal to the villain's health, they add the card of the defeated villain to their discard pile and will be able to use it later on in the game. When playing such card, the player ignores health, weaknesses and retaliation and only uses the loot part. After the hero phase, it is time for the villain's phase. The player whose turn has just ended draws one card from the scheme deck and resolves the effect of the card. In disputable situations, the player with the decision token decides. This may resolve with a move, fight or other action. The game goes on in such rounds until the player's win or the hell track reaches the end and the last 10th round is played and the players did not manage to close all portals. In order to close the portal, a player has to defeat two villains and put one resource on the quest card. Then they move onto the location with the portal, spend a field action and discard all tokens from the quest card to close the portal. Remember that there cannot be any villain's miniature on such location. Once the portal is closed, the player takes the portal token and puts it near their player board to score it at the end of the game. Yes, although your goal is to clean up the mess and close all portals, you will still earn victory points based on your performance. There can only be one greatest hero in London. Players score points only when they manage to close all portals and they receive them for Finishing their individual quest, closing portals, buying cars from the shop, defeating the villains, encountering an event. And they can lose points for being wounded. Score your points and see who did the most to defeat demons from hell.